In this video, you are going to learn how you can create these image sequence animations in Framer and how you can trigger them with scroll. We're going to use code overrides for these, but don't worry, you don't need to write a single line of code. I wrote it for you, so you just need to copy and paste those into your projects and you're good to go. So my name is Nandi, this is Framer University and let's get started. So here we are in Framer and in today's video we're going to use this image sequence animation in two examples. Uh, the first example is the frame.io website uh, recreation or it's just a recreation of a certain section. So as you can see, if we go to frame.io, here it is. You see this section, it uses this image sequence um, animation that plays on scroll. So if, you, if I just scroll really little, you see that um, the laptop is jumping from one image to another so you know it plays the sequence as we scroll and the other example will be this uh, AirPods Pro website this also uses the same image sequencing method for uh, for basically integrating this animation into the website and you might wonder why don't they use videos and uh, well, I think they don't use videos because these are really quick animations. They are really short. So it is, you know, relatively easy to just uh, sequence them with images because, you know, if you have a longer video, then, you know, that would be hundreds of image images. But if you have like a short video, then you have maybe 50 or 60 images and you can you know, easily sequence them and you will basically have a better quality compared uh, to a video and also lighter file size. So, you know, if you use a video that, that would probably be a bigger file size. So yeah, if you have like a really short animation, you might want to just sequence it with this tool, um, easy, gif.com and it has this video to jpeg converter basically so you just upload the video and you can you can get the sweet sequence out uh, pretty easily so yeah let's go <laughs> back to framer and actually you know create these um, image sequence animations so first of all what i want to say is that here you see this tutorial page within this remix. So you're going to find the remix in the comments. You can just click the link and um, you can just copy this project into your account and you're going to see this tutorial page here. So here you'll find the starter file so you can just, you know, get started with me and uh, create the fact with me, you know, as I'm doing it here in the tutorial, you can just do it for yourself in the same time on your file. So this is why I have this little tutorial page right here. But yeah, let's get started. So the thing we're going to use here is uh, basically the images, first of all. So I just uh, downloaded the images from the frame.io website that they use. Uh, of course, um, they worked uh, a ton with this because they had to create the 3D render and then, you know, uh, export uh, the images from that. So I did not create these, uh, but yeah, it is here. It is just being uploaded to my framer project and hopefully it's going to be there soon yeah it is here so now it's yeah it is a couple um, messages here we're just gonna uh, try to dismiss all of them uh it's probably going to take a couple of seconds but okay so now we have these images here as you can see it looks pretty interesting uh what we need to do with these is we need to wrap them in a frame so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select all of them and i'm going to wrap them in a frame Basically, there's a shortcut for this. You want to learn this because it's really important. You're going to use this a ton. Command and enter, and it is wrapped in a frame. Uh, we're going to remove the fill color from this because we don't need that. And the frame will be renamed to laptop. Laptop, okay, really cool. So if I select all of these images within this, uh, yes, they are pinned to the top left and to the right so basically if i resize this and i'm going to also lock this right here just to make sure that we keep the aspect ratio 
Um, you can see that the images are also scaling really nicely. I think I'm going to use 1500. Uh, and, um, and yeah, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to create a component out of this. And when we have that component, we can add different variants to it. Each variant will be basically one image from the sequence. So for this, for example, I think it's 53 images. So we're going to have 53 variants. So in order to create a component out of this, we're going to click laptop and then hit option command and K on our keyboard and then just click create. So now we have variant one. We can just, you know, leave it like variant one. We don't need to rename it. And what we need to do now is to basically hide all the images other than the first image. So we're going to click uh, visible no. So now, as you can see, we only see the first image and what you need to do right now, um, it's going to be a couple of minutes, I guess, is that you click variant, you create a new variant with that and then hide the first image. So visibility, no, and then show the next image. And basically you have to do this 53 times. And I know it's a lot, but I could do it. So you will be able to do it as well. So I'm going to probably uh, cut here because it's going to take really, yeah, just a couple of minutes and I don't want you to get bored. So I'm going to be back when it's ready. Okay. So now, as you can see, we have all the 53 variants here and uh, yeah, on each variant, we have, you know, a different uh, sequence of the image. So yeah. It is really cool. Now all we have to do is to apply the code override that will basically uh, change the variant of this component as we scroll down on the page. So first it's going to show variant one and as we scroll, it's going to switch to variant two, three, four, five, six, seven, and all the way up to 53. So let's do that. But first we're going to integrate it or paste it into our website. So I'm going to just comment an X here. Now it is on my clipboard and I will just, uh, you know, paste it in within this section here um, and make sure that it is absolutely positioned. So it is not uh, in the flow of this section. So I can basically position it um, above all the other content, because if we take a look at this right here, you can see that this laptop image is basically above the text. So yeah, this is what we need. And I will just uh, probably move it a little bit to the uh, bottom and I'm going to hide it to see where it is. I think, I think it's going to be uh, roughly the position. So yeah, it's going to be great. So now what we need uh, is basically the code override, because as you can see, now we, we, we don't do any animation. So let's get that code override. So if you go to framer.university and you search for this frame IO website animation in framer, you will scroll down here and you will find the code override for cycling, cycling through the components variants. So you'll just click this button and it will be copied to your clipboard and you can just uh, create a, you know, code override yourself. So here I'm going to just select the component and here code overrides and then new file and the new override, we're going to call this image sequence and hit create. And here, this is just no, uh, automatically generated default uh, code here. We're going to delay this and then we can comment on we here. So now the code override is pasted. What you need to pay attention to is, for example, if you have a code, uh, sorry, a component with um, maybe 10 variants, so 10 um, image sequence, then you need to change the variant length to 10. So this number always need to be the exact same number uh, that you have within your component. So in this case, it's 54, as you can see, we're going to go into this. And if we go down here, you can see it's 54. Um, 
So yeah, that's why we have 54 here within the override. So now we can come here again to the laptop and we can select the image sequence override and apply it to the component. So now if we basically uh, preview this website, you will see that as I start scrolling on this page, the uh, variants will change. Um, and basically as I scroll down, it will change to variant one, variant two, all the way to variant 54. And that's how we basically play, play this uh, image sequence animation. So yeah, this is the first uh, example. And I'm just gonna quickly show you how you can do the other one. But you might wonder, Nandi, how you optimize this for different viewports. You just, you know, resize it like this and, you know, it's already optimized on here. And, you know, you basically do the same on phone. So it's quite easy. And by the way, what I want to mention here is that if something is, you know, a bit too complex for you, maybe some of these things you don't really understand, you know, what are components and variants. I have a free course coming out really soon. So go to framer.university and just, you know, join the waitlist if you haven't already. And I'm going to make sure to send an email to you once uh, that free course is out, which is going to basically teach the basics of Framer to you. Maybe it's already out, I don't know when you're watching this video, but yeah, go to framer.university. You're gonna also find the link in the description and you're gonna find everything there. So yeah, let's continue this video. So now let's go on to the next one, which is the AirPods Pro. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna uh, open up our finder, uh, look up the images. So here they are. We have 64 images here, so it's a bit more. Um, it's going to take a bit more to actually, you know, create all the war variants for this, but hey, it is what it is. So I'm again waiting a couple of seconds here to upload all of these images and to dismiss all of these little notifications here. And uh, hopefully I'm going to be back soon. Okay, so now we have all these images here. Again, it looks, I don't know, interesting. I, I actually love how this looks, whatever. So um, we can just select all of these. And, um, and again, this is a little quiz for you. What shortcut am I gonna press? Is it command and enter exactly? Because we need to um, wrap it in a frame. So now it is wrapped in a frame and we can also remove the fill color. And if I go to the layers panel, I can rename this to AirPods animation or something like that. And again, another shortcut, option, command and K to create a component out of this. And then again, a couple minutes of hard work, creating all the variants for the images that are part of the sequence. Again, on the first variant, we only show the first image, so all the rest is going to be hidden. So let me just set them to visible no. And then variant two, here I'm gonna show the next one. So the first one will be hidden and then the next one will be visible. And I'm gonna again do this for the rest of the variant. So I'm gonna probably cut again and we're gonna be back in a couple of minutes. So as you can see, now I have all the variants for this sequence, and as you can see, each variant is a different image uh, of the sequence. So yeah, we have, I think, 65 variants here. So we need to remember that because we have to change the, the code over, right? Um, as you might remember. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Command X and I will paste this in within this animation frame here. And it will be, I think it will be relative. I'll make sure that the aspect ratio is locked again. And I will just make sure that it fills up the available space. And I think that's it. Let's, let's take a look at this. Uh, of course, nothing happens because we need to apply the code override. So again, you will need to go to framer.university 
you'll have this image sequence player override and basically you can just you know search uh, the uh, website image sequence player override and here you go and just copy this code here and go back here and just click code overrides when the animation you know component is selected code overrides create a new file and this will be image sequence I will paste in the uh, code override here and as you remember we have to change the variant length uh, because you know this has a different variant length it is 66 and yeah basically that's it I think we can now take a look at this and no we cannot because as you can see we have the animation comp component selected and the code override is not yet added so we will select the image sequence and then with scroll variants and now if we take a look at this as you can see it works perfectly so yeah that's how easy it is to create an image sequence animation on your framer website